What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, finally getting around to my Zark video. A lot of people have been talking about this card. A lot of people were anticipating Zark because if you watch the anime, he kind of is like the boss monster to end all boss monsters, at least for Yu-Gi-Oh! Art V. And it's not like I was ignoring this card or anything like that. It was just because the Jump Fiesta was going on and it was just so much shit to cover, man, between the new announcement of like the anime and then Cosmo Blazer Dragon finally being revealed. I mean, that's a card they hinted at like what five six seven years ago and then there was just so much information with the new ocg ban list and the errata so there's a lot of stuff to cover and it was kind of difficult for me to kind of prioritize it plus people still send me replays on a daily basis so i was like man i don't know if i'm ever gonna get around to this i know some people are like you fucked hard you never talked about those predator plant cards i'm gonna <laughs> i don't know when i'm gonna fucking work in predator plants but i'll try my best maybe i'll do an excellent adventures of predator plants if somebody can send me like I don't know, eight or nine replays, I'll do that. So anyway, Zork is an extremely powerful monster. Again, he's kind of like the boss of all boss monsters. From Arc V, uh, he's powerful as fuck, and he better be because he does pretty much require five monsters, or not five monsters, but five cards uh, for you to invest. I mean, you have to have some way of uh, fusion summoning him, which not always requires you to use a card on that. But in addition to that, obviously, he has to bring all these summoning mechanics together, you know, all become one XC and fusion and synchro and pendulum these 4,000 attack 4,000 defense that was one of the first things I noticed is damn he's pretty damn strong when it comes to stats I mean don't get me wrong I wish it was like 6,000 attack and like I, I take fucking zero defense at that point but the second thing I noticed is uh this fucking card has six different effects and <laughs> that's a lot because I mean even if I didn't know what the effects already were on a card with six fucking effects I would assume at least three of them are good and i'd be like okay we got something here if you're gonna have six effects no less than three of them should be at least pretty decent and zork definitely fits the bill when it comes to that so he's a dark dragon and he what let's actually start with the monster effect uh you guys know how to summon zark again you have to use the four different types of summoning uh conditions he can he must be fusion summon it cannot be special summoned by any other ways you would expect that out of a card that has such a high investment effect number one if this card is special summon destroy all cards your opponent controls okay that's really good it's basically a one-sided judgment dragon i mean Who's going to like, that's always pretty much going to be useful unless you're summoning this turn one and your opponent doesn't have anything. Effect number two, he is a magic specter, uh, cannot be targeted or destroyed by our opponent's card effects. I like that. He had to have some type of protection. I mean, granted, everything gets fucked by kaijus, but still, it is kind of nice to know that Regeki and, you know, dumb shit like Evac won't just get rid of him. Effect number three. When this card destroys a monster by battle, you can special summon a Supreme King Servant Dragon monster from your main or extra. I'll talk about those guys probably in another video. We already know a couple of them. So he has the ability to not only nuke your opponent's board, but then if he happens to destroy something, if he's you know been on the field for a couple of turns, he can just instantly go plus one. And then since he is the first Pendulum Fusion monster, which by the way, why didn't I even bring that up? I didn't, I mean, we knew Zark was going to be a fusion, but no one knew that he was going to be a Pendulum. Pendulum Fusion, I sure as fuck didn't. Effect number four, um, when this card in the monster zone is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can place this card in the Pendulum Zone. Now, his Pendulum effects, in my opinion, are actually just as strong, if not better, than his monster effects, which is pretty damn, like, that's pretty damn hard to accomplish, considering he has some very powerful monster effects. Um, pendulum effect number one, Fusion, Synchro, and Xe monsters, your opponent controls, cannot activate their effects. Effect number two, once per turn, when your opponent adds cards to their hand outside of the draw phase, you can destroy that card or cards. That is... Oh my goodness, both of those effects are really, really good. I mean, you guys know how fucking annoying Dark Law is just picking apart cards out of your hand anytime you try and search from like Rota or Emergency Call or any of the other games, 5 billion other cards. But this is even better because like, yeah, it doesn't actually banish the card. It does destroy it. So I guess there are certain things that would be able to trigger. But this means that let's just say your opponent activates Pendulum Call where they're trying to add two cards at the same time. Dark Law would only be able to take out one card. Zark can take both of them out because it doesn't just say card it says cards the first effect being pretty much a floodgate for any xe like synchro or fusions is obviously fucking ridiculous i wish there was some way to fucking just play zork as a as a pendulum like if zork could if zork was just a pendulum he'd be broken like i would want this card like low-key i'd be like yeah this card probably she needs to be banned because it's, it's a, like a little too powerful i mean zork is an incredibly powerful monster 
I do wish that it couldn't be destroyed by battle because um, it would just be a shame if you invested so many resources into summoning Zark and then a Utopia the Lightning just fucks you over and you can't even put it in the Pendulum Zone because obviously Zark's effect would be negated. Now there is a way to summon Zark with one card, which is a Hero Lives in the Stratos and then you do a whole bunch of other loopy shit. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it posted on YouTube. Lithium had it, Asian Eyes had it, um, what's it called, Team Samurai. A lot of channels have been posting the one card Zark uh, loop or I guess one card Zark summon and it kind of makes me rethink about how quote unquote difficult it is to kind of summon this card because I'm kind of thinking if people have already figured out ways to summon Zark with one card even though you have to run a whole bunch of convoluted crap like what's stopping them from just making other decks that are a lot more consistent like I kind of feel like Zork is maybe not as difficult to summon as we originally thought like even when you look at these conditions a fusion dragon monster a synchro dragon monster in XC and a pendulum dragon monster like I don't know maybe even outside of the magicians it just might be a lot easier to summon than we think although i think lithium was right like he kind of his undertone of his video was just please don't kaiju me because yeah if you get kaiju you basically just get dicked because then you can't even put zark in your pendulum scale because obviously this card was not destroyed by battle or card effects so i mean zark is definitely a strong card it's one of the strongest fusion monsters ever created the question that you have to ask yourself is is it worth the investment although at the same time i don't know man these crazy combos are coming up where you can make zark with like one card and shit and it's kind of making you think that the investment might not be as much as you thought it was so anyways i don't think that zark will be like a competitive card i think it will be more of a casual card maybe i might play it on my live streams when i start streaming again and we'll just kind of have some fun but overall i do actually like the design of uh, zark and i do i think that this is a fitting cover card and i think it's kind of a fitting monster to be like you know one of the epic boss monsters of all time let me know what you guys think of zark uh, the card actually it looks pretty cool as well so anyways Anyways, thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you guys have not already.